morning. Good morning. How many of y'all need the Lord Jesus? Amen. 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 All of us do. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you right now. I need you right now. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you, Lord Jesus. I need you right now. you going through through this pandemic the Lord will always make a way you ready doc test hey hey good morning good morning <laughs> I'm all social distance I'm <laughs> amen anywhere yeah. I want to start yeah. the Lord will make a way. Yes, if you ever been in anything, you ever been through anything, and he brought you out. Like a ship that's tossed and driven. Oh, my God. 
y'all praise, yeah. How many of y'all believe that he'll do it? Won't he do it? He'll make a way, y'all. I guarantee you, if you just give your troubles to him. Did y'all know that? Group, did you know that? Church, did you know that? Yes, sir. I got to say it one more time. He'll make a way. He'll make a way. My God will make a way. Yes. If you trust him, he'll do it. God will make a way. Yes. Have you tried him? Did you test him? Y'all say what they say. Say it with them. Come on. Come on, church. Say.
church say amen. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to take this out of little sweaty here. Yeah, he made a way. Yeah, you want to get your, you left something, Brother Mariah. You want to take that with you to the napkin? All right. <laughs> you didn't recognize him at first with his dreads cut off, amen? The Lord would make a way, amen. Come on. We want to take a confession before we get started here. We have uh, Mr. George McCree. Uh, been having a study with him last week and on, also on this morning. And he's ready to uh, be baptized in the body of Christ. So, Mr. McCree, do you believe with all your heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? I do. This confession has brought life to you, a new life to you, but bring a, a better life uh, to you and to our Lord, Savior, Jesus Christ. We're going to be baptized to become a member of the body of Christ. you going down at Mr. McCree, but you're going to come up as Brother McCree. Amen. Amen. Let's give his brother a round of applause. Amen and praise the Lord. Good morning. And welcome to the Northbound Church of Christ. Woo! Our praise and worship team this morning put into our mindset this morning what they call the, the you know, the little things that go on in our mind, our brain cells. They kind of reminded us that, that, that and, it, and it's just, Sister Taylor said that I need you, Lord Jesus. And, 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 then, and then the emphasis on that song was that not only do I need you, Lord Jesus, she said, I need you right now. Now, it, it, it's, it, there, there are times when we can go around and things are going good and we don't really kind of think about Jesus the way that we should. But there are the times when we, we, we need him right then, then we say, Lord, <laughs> ain't nobody else but you. Then, then, then we followed up with a song that says, the Lord will make Away. Now we're not going to get to them two words there yet. It says that the Lord will make a way. Now, now I want you to understand this. Now, the, the two words that follow that, the Lord will make a way somehow, that's for us. That ain't got nothing to do with the Lord. Because the Lord is going to make a way. Okay, the, the Lord don't have to think about whether or not it's going to be done or not or when it's going to be done or not or whatever. See, all that part comes with the somehow. So that's where our mind is set in right now. We got to just remember that, okay, he's going to do it somehow. But the Lord, because he is the Lord, is going to make the way. Good morning again. And welcome to the Northbound Church of Christ. Those of who are visiting with us, indeed, you are honored guests. And we're glad that you're here with us today, and we just thank you so much that you chose to be here today with Northbound. Amen. We're glad that you're here. You're here at the Northbound Church of Christ. We're under the tutelage of Brother Arthur Lee Brown, and Assistant Brother Brown to be is Brother Jamal Butler as our Assistant Minister. Here at the Northbound Church of Christ, our mission is to save souls and mature the saints. Our vision, be real, be relevant, be ready. And when, 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 when we talk about real, relevant, and ready, we need to understand that it's an attitude. And only that only is an attitude. It, it's something physical about it also. Because once you have that mindset and that attitude, when the opportunity comes up for you to be real, the type of person that God wants you to be, not, not a genetic person. Right. When it's time for you to be relevant, to talk about God's word the way that it is supposed to be without any addition or subtraction, and to be ready to do it because that opportunity comes and not wait that wait that the opportunity has already gone past you. When the opportunity comes, seize that moment right there, real relevant and ready. That is our vision here for North Valley. That is what we try to instill in our North Valley family, and that's what we have chosen that we're going to be about, and that's what we are, real relevant and ready. We thank you for being here with us this morning. We thank you for all of those who are, are visiting with us this morning via Facebook Live, via Zoom, 
and we just pray that you will enjoy our North Isle services as we continue as much as we have already right here and now. We wish that you were here, but we're having a good time anyway without you in the Lord, but when you get a chance to come back, we're ready for you. Praise the Lord, we're ready for you. Let's go to our God in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we come to you and we thank you, dear Lord, for your saving grace, everlasting love. We thank you, dear Lord, for your blessings that you've given us, dear Lord. We thank you another for allowing us to see another day, waking us up this morning. As it was said this morning, dear Lord, we need you, and we needed you, dear Lord, right now to wake us up this morning. And you, do, you chose to make a way, dear Lord, in those times when we are down and out. Those times, dear Lord, when we may have mental despair, frustrations, emotional despair, physical despair, mental uh, illnesses, sickness, dear Lord. We know that you will make a way because that's the time when we need you, Lord, right now. We love you, dear Lord. We just pray, Heavenly Father, that you will be with us. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you, that our praise to you, dear Lord, is acceptable, dear Lord, because we know, dear Lord, that you want to be praised. Here at North Island, dear Lord, we want to praise you, dear Lord, because that's what you desire. Be praised. And we're going to worship you, dear Lord, because we need you, dear Lord. And from that, dear Lord, we know, dear Lord, you're going to bless us. You're going to bless us because we are doing what you want us to do as your children. And dear Lord, we ask that you stay by our side and be our guide. In the name of your son, dear Jesus, we come to you as one, giving you all glory, honor, and praise. Let us all stay together. Amen. 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 Hey, good morning. God is so good. The last time I seen y'all was Brother Brown was talking about the cussing section and everything else like that. I don't know if y'all remember. Is it spread it out now? Yeah. Spread it out? Okay. It's spread it out. It's still over. Okay, yeah, that's the last time. But God is good. He made a way, like he like Brother Jesse said, amen. Glad to see y'all. Good to see y'all. Mm, let the spirit of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the spirit of the Lord let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King let it rise among us. Let it rise. Sing, oh, 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 oh. let it rise. Just let the spirit, let the spirit. Spirit of the Lord, and let it rise among us. Let the Spirit of the Lord, and let it rise among us. Let the praises of our King, and let it rise among us. Let it rise. Sing, oh, 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 oh. let it rise. Lord, just let the glory of the Lord, let the Oh, oh, oh. 
In the sight of the Lord. Oh, humble thyselves in the sight of the Lord. And He will lift you up. And He will lift you up. Oh, humble thyselves in the sight of the Lord. Me down and causing him a fight. 
called giving. The scripture reference for this is found in 2 Corinthians 9, 6, and 7, and it reads, He who sows sparingly reaps sparingly. He who sows bountifully reaps bountifully. Every man has purpose in his heart to give, not under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Let us pray. Our Father, we come thanking you for another day, for another chance to get back a portion which you'll bless us with. We pray that the funds be the funds that be given to use for the upkeep and glorification for your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. At this time, please raise your hands if you have an offering at this time.
called communion or the Lord's Supper. Christ instituted the Lord's Supper in Matthew 26, 26 through 28 on the night's betrayal. The frequency is found in Acts 20 and 7 where disciples came together on the first day of the week. The amount of which we take the Lord's Supper is found in 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 29 as it reads. I have received of the Lord that which I have also given you, that the Lord Jesus on the night's betrayal took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and said, take and eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus also took a cup and said, this is the new covenant and my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. Every time you eat the bread and drink the cup, you represent my death until I come again. Whoever does this unworthily will be guilty of my blood and body. Let a man examine himself and after eat the bread and drink the cup. For anyone who does this unworthily inflicts judgment among himself. Let us pray. Our kind, gentle Father, we thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, for sending your son down for us, Father. Thank you, Father, for bridging back that gap between man and you, Father. Father, we can't say thank you enough. Father, we ask that you continue to watch over leaders and guide us. Praying, Father, to always keep us, Father, that we keep you one in our heart, one in our soul. These things do ask for in your son, Jesus' whole divine name we do pray. Amen. Love, oh, love. Lifted me, oh love, oh love, lifted me. You know that love, love it lifted me. You know that love.
Jesus come he stays he will you by his love and out of the taken from the book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter 5. The book of Luke chapter 5 verses 36 through 39. The book of Luke. The book of Luke chapter 5. The book of Luke chapter 5, verses 36 through 39. If you are able, please stand as we read God's holy and divine word. This morning we'll be reading this, these passages from two translations. First, the Living Bible, then from the Passion Translation. Luke chapter 5, 36 through 39 from the Living Bible. And it reads, then Jesus used this illustration. No one tears off a piece of a new garment to make a patch for an old one. Not only will the new garment be ruined, but the old garment will look worse with a new patch on it. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. For the new wine bursts the old skins, ruining the skins and spilling the wine. New wine must be put into new wineskins. But no one after drinking the old wine seems to want the fresh and the new. But no one after drinking the old wine seems to want the fresh and the new. The old ways are better, they say. The Passion Translation.
And he gave them this illustration. No one rips up a new garment to make patches for an old, worn out one. If you tear up the new to make a patch for the old, it will not match the old garment. And who pours new wine into an old wineskin? If someone did, the old wineskin would burst and the new wine would be lost. New wine must always be poured into new wineskins. Yet you say, the old ways are better. And you refuse to even taste the new that I bring. May I read that one more time, please? New wine must always be poured into new wineskins. Yet you say the old ways are better. And you refuse to even taste the new that I bring. Let the Lord add a blessing to those who hear and obey his holy and divine word. Let us all bow. Our Father God in heaven, again we come to you. Thank you for your saving grace, your everlasting love. We thank you, dear Lord, for this and every opportunity we come to you as one. Thank you again, dear Lord, for allowing us to see this new day up until this very moment right now where we come to you as one. Worshiping you in spirit and truth through our prayer, our petition to you. We love you, Lord Jesus. We praise you, Lord Jesus. We worship you, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Lord Jesus. We are devoted to you, Lord Jesus. We give our lives to you, Lord Jesus, because you gave your life for us. How could we do anything less than that? Because you did more for us. As we continue with this service today, dear Lord, we pray that all will keep our minds and our open, open, dear Lord, towards you. Recognizing what you've done for us. Recognizing what you've done for our families our children, our loved ones, and recognizing, dear Lord, that you are going to bring us through this pandemic that we're in right now. We sang songs earlier this morning that says that I need you, Lord Jesus, I lead you right now because we know that you will make a way. You're already doing it. And we're just holding on right now to see you through it. As we continue with our services today, dear Lord, we just pray, Heavenly Father, that you will continue to be with us. Bless everyone that's here today in our auditorium. Bless everyone, dear Lord, that's here via Facebook, via Zoom. Pray, Heavenly Father, that all of our hearts and our minds are focused on you. Dear Lord, we come to you. We ask that you stay by our side and be our guide. Bless our manservant as, as he comes up today and continues with his lesson, dear Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you continue to bless him, continue to give him strong health, continue to give his family strong health, and continue to, we, actually, we all can continue to encourage them to stay strong and be focused and devoted to you. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you right now. We know, Heavenly Father, that you will make a way. 
We come to you as one, giving you all glory, honor, and praise. Let us all say together, Amen. 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 Sing a song by request, which is a uh, someday. The last time I sing, I sung it here. Um, I was telling y'all that uh, we should all get prepared to see Jesus someday. But y'all ready today? Yep. <laughs> amen, amen. It's okay. We got to get our lives prepared. We all want to be there one day and someday. Amen. Sopranos. Someday, someday, oh, someday, 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 oh, someday, someday. Altos. Peace and joy and happiness, no more sorrow. No more sorrow. No Amen. Tennis.
boy didn't tell me I was going to be singing today. He just points at you. <laughs> That's a beautiful song when he calls my name. I, I, I like to make a point here, preacher. Uh, whatever name your mama made up for you. Did you know that's the name God going to recognize you when you get to heaven? <laughs> you ever thought about that? It ain't Pookie. It ain't Junebug. If your mother just, I, my middle son, my, one of my kids, I, I named him Shagan. I just made it up. C-H-A-G-E-N. And God wrote his name in the Lamb's Book of Life. You think about that. Amen. How personal that is. You know my name. You know my name. Say, you know my name. You know my name. Say it, y'all. Say, you know my name. ever thought about that? Say, you know my name. When she called you Brother Brown. You know my name. God's going to say, Brown, well done. You know my name. When he sees you, Philip. Yes. You know my name. And he looks and he sees the blood, y'all. Looks in that other book, yes. And he searches the peas, oh yes. He's gonna call Philip Settles, oh yes. Because he knows your name, son, yes, he does. That's why. 
why he knows me. Oh, 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 oh. that's why he knows me. Yes, and I'm gonna walk on in. Yes, I'm gonna bounce on in. Yes, cause I'm saved. How many of y'all know you're saved? Cause I'm saved. How many of y'all know you're saved? Cause God knows my name. He knows my name. I want y'all to say it. Say it with me. Say, say you know my name. Knows you personally. Yes. Tell the angels I'm here right now, Lord. Don't forget me. Don't forget me. I know you're doing a brand new thing. Include me. Don't forget me, Lord. I'm here. Yes, I. It's hard. 
Jamal's name. He knows Quinn's name and Phil's name. Yes, lift your hands and say, God knows my name. He knows my name. He knows my name. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Know my name. So you know my name, Lord. us today are glad that he knows your name. Once again, uh, led by our very gifted praise team. I'm all off kilter, Brother Conley. Because it's real with me. And it's personal. I'm glad today that he knows my name. I don't want to get started. But when haters start to hate, I'm just glad that he knows my name. When those that like to scandalize, try to scandalize my name, I'm just glad that he knows my name. Can we give some love to our praise team? We give them some love. And thank you for participating and being genuine and lifting up your voice and offering praise to God. Nothing worse than singing to a bunch of dead folk. <laughs> Say amen. I ain't know who Jesse was. I walked right by. I ain't know who he was, but Conley, I just, who that and everything? Praise the Lord. Good to see you, bro. And uh, can we give him some love also? I think when we saw you last time, I could, I could hug your neck. We can, now we got, the, we got the elbow bump now. Praise the Lord. Got the elbow bump. And, uh, I'll go ahead and say it. They, they got a new album out now. And believe me, bro, Jesse, Philip made sure. <laughs> <laughs> Philip made sure I got my copy, praise the Lord. Well, blow my phone up. Get your copy. All right, Philip, I got it, praise the Lord. If you haven't gotten it yet, what's, what's the name of it? The, the Amazing Magnificent God. The Amazing Magnificent God. If you have not gotten your copy, Make sure you make your investment. Make sure you make your investment. It is, it is worth the investment. All, all, the services. all the services. Praise the Lord. Straight company. They got some new wine in there. Well, don't, don't get me started. The man right there, he tell you. Praise the Lord. I, I got some announcements I got to make. And I, can't, I don't remember them all. Um, and I asked a few people. I don't call them by the name. I asked some people to help me out with some announcements, Brother uh, Fazell, because I'm a straight shooter. I just like to, I'm going to just say it like it is, you know what I mean? Some people, you know, you got to cuddle with some people, you know what I'm talking about? Some people getting their feelings about everything, but no, nobody passed me a note, so I'm just going to say it. I'm going to try to be, you know, 
delicate. No, I can't be off. I got to be Brother Brown. I got to be the preacher. There's <laughs> a difference. <laughs> Better understand somebody. Praise the Lord. Okay. We've been back in this building since June? June. July. July, Phil. And we opened the building under condition. That is, that you must wear a mask to come in the building, and you must maintain social distancing when in the sanctuary. We purposely arranged the seating such that when you sat down, you would have been socially distant. But some people have started moving chairs and not being socially distant. Now I'm trying to be fluffy, Brother Conley. The chairs were already set socially distant. I want to ask you to stop moving the chairs. Stop moving the chairs. And for those who just feel like you just got to move a chair, have enough courtesy to put the chair back. So what you're not going to do is stress my wife out because she's coming here cleaning up behind you that I got to deal with it. So please, don't move the chairs or put the chair back, okay? Was, was that soft? I, I tried. Lord knows I tried to cushion it up. I tried to cushion it because uh, <laughs> I want to say some other stuff another way. Praise the Lord. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there were some other announcements, I'm sure. I'm, was there some other stuff? Hmm? Security. Okay. Another thing that we have asked. Brother Major Snell and Brother Duran Florence are doing a great job for us for security. A great job. And they, everything that they ask you to do comes from the leadership. If they ask you to do something, please do it. If they ask you to do something, please do it. Or you can stay home. I'm just saying. I'm just saying, I'm, you don't have to, be, I'm, we want you here, but we want to all get along. We want to all, this is for all of us, okay? Was that, fluff, was that fluffy enough too? Was that soft? Was that good enough? I'm trying, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling, but I'm trying. I'm, I asked y'all to give me a note. I, I just would have read the note and been done with it. It's good, okay. No, they don't need it. Uh, say that for certain individuals. Okay. Is there, are there any others that we're supposed to make? I don't remember them all. Okay. It's good to see everybody. And we're going to pick up on discussion two of the wine skins. It's a real talk series, Brother Marat. Um that God laid on my heart. Well, we, we're dealing with some things that you know, sometimes we need to say what needs to be said. Sometimes we need to say what needs to be said. And so uh, we're going to talk about the wine skins today. And we, and we had a great discussion on last week. Um, I pray that you can go back and uh, review that again on our Facebook page. Uh, we're not going to do a full review of that. But just know that uh, there's a difference between Wine and liquor. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It's a difference. Some people were shouting out moonshine, bro. bro. <laughs> Patron. 
He ain't talking about that. He talking about, he talking about wine. Go back and, and, and take a listen to what we talked about on last week. We, we, we kind of set the stage, but today we got to get into it, to some things, talking about this new wine and, and the new wine skins. And can, can we give some love to Brother Connolly for the way he read the text? And Brother Connolly, you, you might as well go ahead and get your lesson ready because you might as well go on it. You might as well go on because you, he read, he read, you heard it too, didn't you, bro? Praise the Lord. Even, Jesse said you read the free. So we're going to jump right into it. Um, I'm, I'm not going to reread what Brother Conley has already read for us. So we, we have the text. And so meet me now in Mark 7. Mark 7, verse 5. You don't, you don't need to stand. We're just continuing with uh, discussion 2. We want to make sure we try to finish this uh, today. Mark 7, verse 5 through 8. And I'm going to read first. The easy read version. The easy read version. And there you will see these words. The Pharisees and teachers of the law said to Jesus, your followers don't follow the traditions we have from our great leaders who lived long ago. They eat their food with hands that are not clean. Why do they do this? Jesus answered, you are all hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he wrote these words from God about you. These people honor me with their words, but I am not really important to them. Their worship of me is worthless. The things they teach are only human mm -hmm. rules. You have stopped following God's command, preferring instead the man-made rules you got from others. Amplified version of the same text reads like this. So the Pharisees and the scribes asked Jesus, why do your disciples not live their lives according to the tradition of the elders? But instead eat their bread with ceremonial, ceremonially unwashed hands. He replied, rightly did Isaiah prophesy about you hypocrites. Play actors, pretenders, as it is written in scripture, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. They worship me in vain. Their worship is meaningless and worthless, a pretense, teaching the precepts of men as doctrine, giving their traditions equal weight with the scriptures. You disregard and neglect the commandment of God and cling faithfully to the traditions of men. Jesus said, they worship me in vain. The worship is meaningless. A pretense. And Brother Jesse, I talk to myself all the time. And so when I, when I saw that word pretense, I say, self, what is pretense? That's, the, that's not a word that I use in my everyday vocab. You know what, I mean? what is pretense? Pretense is an attempt to make something that is not the case appear to be true. So Jesus said their worship is meaningless. Their worship is an attempt to make something that is not the case appear true. Teaching the precepts, I say self, 
what, what is what is precept? It's a general rule intended to regulate behavior or thought. Teaching things to govern people's behavior, teaching it as doctrine, has nothing to do with what the Lord actually said. Some other words for precepts, one of the words is doctrine. Law. You ever heard that word before? Law. Mandate. Dictate. Some people love to dictate. Outside of scripture. So, <laughs> you know, I understand that some people prefer the old wineskins. I understand that. And for many, it's a good choice because, you know, God loves them. He will bless them. But the trade-off is that they seemingly won't or are incapable of receiving the new wine. I'm on slide 17. Y'all remember this slide from discussion one? Generational breakdown? I say 17. Y'all remember this slide? What generation are you in? You see yourself? From, 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 from discussion one, we understand that generations differ. Cultures even differ. So there's some things that we can do now that we couldn't do during the baby boomer age. Mm -hmm. We didn't have smartphones in the baby boomer age. No, flip phones was generation Y. Y'all remember flip phones? Well, we thought we had something when we had the flip phone. But we thought you, you thought you was the high cheese if you had a, if you had a flip phone. <laughs> When we talk about the wineskins, Jesus said you can't take a new patch, or new wine rather, and put it in an old wine skin. Why? Because an old wine skin is set. Therefore, it is un it's unable to accept anything that is still growing beyond its set, it, beyond its it's limitations of an already set skin. It's going, to, it's going to stretch so far because it's set. And for some people, church, quote unquote church, is a picture of a conservative, sometimes even legalistic determination to maintain a distinctive identity, especially and even in the face of change. I've heard people, I've heard, I've heard leaders tell me, tell me directly. Don't bring that over here. We aren't going to change. They can do whatever they want to do out there. But in here, we are not going to change. Everything around us can change, but not us. But I think if we're real today, we can agree that as a starting point, the reality is our younger people have been passive at best and inactive at worst to all things Christ, the church, and even Christianity. Would you agree with that? Look around you. Besides the casual observation, have we asked ourselves why? 
Have we been real in our assessment? Allow me to show you some factors to this truth. And I want us to know something that this discussion today is beyond northbound. I'm not talking about just northbound. I'm making, we're talking about ge- general reality of church in general as it relates to our younger people. It's bigger than northbound. But that still doesn't mean, it doesn't, doesn't give us an excuse to be rigid. This is beyond these walls. This is all inclusive. So what then is the wine? What is the wine for this this discussion? And and what is the wine skin for us? We should be the wine and not the skin. The skin is your current level of understanding. Only by being open and flexible to change can your skin allow, uh, dem- uh, allow for demonstrable growth. Only by being flexible can you see growth. And why? is more potent in greater quantities. Y'all stay with me now. If you want more wine, meaning more growth, but you have a small glass, a a set skin, a, a, a small skin, then you can only have as much demonstrable growth, as much faith, as much freedom as, you, as, as yours, your glass can hold. And all of us have our own glass. In, in, in discussion one, brother, I asked the question, who are we? Who, who is northbound? We're, we're young. We're less than five years old. Who do we want northbound to be? And I asked the question, I said, do you want to grow or do you want to be comfortable? Everybody told me they want to grow. Great. But we got to be flexible. We got to be flexible. The more wine you drink, the more filled you can be. Let me put some Bible on it, they're looking at me funny. Ephesians 5.18, Ephesians 5.18, Amplified Version, do not get drunk with wine. So we're talking about two different things. See, you got to keep it in context. Remember this word, context. I'm going to teach you now. Context. Do not get drunk with wine. That's another spirit. That's, that's a whole nother. Matter of fact, they call, <laughs> they call liquor spirits, don't they? <clears throat> I'm sorry. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is wickedness, corruption, stupidity. But be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly guided by him. That's in your Bible if you ain't told it out. That's in your Bible right now. I'm not telling you to be drunk. And that's, and that's another thing. Uh, oh, we're going to get into that. I, I don't want to get, ooh, don't get into that. We're going to get into that. I'm glad I caught myself, Jamal. Ooh. Real talk is the way forward. We got to be real. If we want to bring people to Christ in this day and time, we got to be real. Our methods must be relevant to the times in which we live, if we are truly going to capture and and keep the imagination of our young people. 
young adults on down. In other words, Gen Y and Gen, X, uh, uh, Gen, y and Gen Z, they also want to know how this Bible stuff relates to me and my situation. I contend today that the only way we can do this is by having real talk. Gone are the days of depending and, and, and accepting a teaching simply and only based on who said it. The church generically uh, has had a, had a time of dependence on someone else's library. Someone else's library to teach them. Someone else who spent the money. Someone else who, who, who leveraged relationships uh, to attain uh, tens and hundreds of books for their library. You know where my library is right now? Right here. Library, right here. Literally, hundreds, I, I dare to say thousands of books right here. And if you ain't spent no money, you can ask Siri. Siri, what is so-and-so? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what's the uh, Google? What's the other one? Uh, Alexa. We are in an age now where technology has made information instantly and readily available for all to receive. The message, though, we, the message will never change. The message will never change. The message is for all, not just those who prefer 8-track or album, cassette tapes. CD, even CDs now is old. We got a whole generation that don't know nothing about going to no store to buy no record. We used to have a whole stores for nothing but we used to go to the record store, Philip, the record store. Turtles, Turtles was my favorite store back in the day. Look at, we got young people look at me like, what in the world is a turtle? Y'all, <laughs> they, don't, they don't know. Because now all you got to do is download. You ain't got to leave your house to get what you want now. Get on your phone and download it. The same message is for them too. So one method that we must adopt to is to listen to our young people. They are the future of the church. That said, we too have the responsibility to learn and to study and to listen, to invest in their own maturity. Young people, you have a responsibility too. You don't get off on this. All of us need to study and learn. But how do we do it? Because the fact of the matter is, don't none of us know everything. But they are the ones who are the future. So what's the church going to look like for them? I got some stats I want to give you. We're going to get into some stats. Here's an article. If you go um, a couple of articles, I'm going to give you some stats. And the morning's part I was telling you about. Um, you go on pewform.org. They, they have an article there. It says young adults around the world are less religious. Around the world. If you go to that article, they got maps and charts, and it's, it's quite extensive. But for this, call, for this case, I just want to tell you, this ain't just Jacksonville. This ain't just northbound. It's all over the world. Another article from USA Today. Churches would win back teens like me if they were more welcoming and less judgmental. Lord have mercy. It's about to get real.
as a leadership team, we, we made a decision to listen to our young people. We asked them what were their barriers to engagement. Why is it that when we look at, at our assembly today that we have, how old are you? How old are you? 20, well, you're almost 30, boy. You got a couple more, you got a couple more years, boy. You're going to be like us, boy. We got two or three young adults in here, two or three teenagers, and that's it. Why is that? Why? We ask them to be honest. We ask them to be real. So here's some real talk for the, for the Gen, Gen Ys and Gen Zs of the world. They said, offer us flexible ways to worship. In the Barna, in the, in, on that Barna website, Jamal, it said that it, it asked for a percentage of the church going 13 to 18 year olds in the survey. And it said that uh, that age group, 13, 18 year olds, said that Church is too much of an exclusive club for them to relate to positively. Too much of an exclusive club. So that age group is telling us we don't feel included in what's going on. It feels like a you ever been to a place where you can tell where you're not wanted? You, you, yeah. yeah. you been there? Yeah. That, that, they're telling us that they don't feel welcome at church. Why? Ooh, don't get into that. They also said that God's house should be welcoming. Should. Be welcoming. You know what that tells me? Generically, in the eyes of the teenagers, generically, the church is not welcoming. It's like an exclusive club. <laughs> it's been nice knowing y'all, I'm trying to tell you. I got six things I want to share with you. Six, re six more I want to share with you. They said that churches seem overprotective. Reason number one. These are, and this, this, uh, this is the young adults right here. This is 18 to 29 year olds. Said that Christians demonize everything outside of the church. Twenty-three percent said that completely or mostly that was their experience, that the churches, or Christians rather, demonized everything outside of the church. Said my church is too concerned that movies, music, and video games are harmful. What caught my eye, Jamal, was too concerned. Not that you're concerned, but you're too concerned, which tells me it's all about how you say, what you say, and who you saying it to. If I don't know you at all, why am I coming to your child? Or to any, any young person in a dogmatic type of way. You ought not be doing that. Your mama taught you better than that. See, that kind of stuff. That kind of stuff right there. I'm going deeper. It's been, it's been, nice, it's been nice knowing y'all. Number two. Teens and 20-somethings' experience of Christianity is shallow. One-third, 31% said church is boring. Yeah. 
to them. Boring, Brother Connolly. Twenty-four percent said that the Bible is not taught clearly or often enough. <laughs> they also said that God seems missing from my personal experience of church. So they come to church, but they don't see God nowhere. If they don't see God, what do they see? Well, we're going to get there. Number three. Young adults feel disconnected from church or from faith uh, is the tension they feel uh, between Christianity and science. The most common of the perception is this, is, in this arena is that Christians are too confident that they know all the answers. Some people just make up stuff just to sound like they know what I'm talking about. They don't know what you're talking about. We already told you, take, uh, information now is readily available. How do you know they haven't already done research? They haven't already asked Siri and Google and election them about a thing, and then they come ask you just to see what you're going to say. I'll tell you. Again, gone out of days now. Where well, somebody just gonna believe something because Brown said it, or Jamal said it, or Brother Conley said it. You better do your work. And if you don't know, say, I don't know. But I'm glad you brought that to my attention. Let's take, let's take a look at that together. What is your understanding of? Whatever, you, whatever the subject at hand. What's your understanding of it? Where do you get that from? Help me understand where you are. Let's look at that together. Humble yourself. My skin is still new. I'm still trying to learn. I'm still trying to grow. Don't ever get to a place where you think you know everything. All right, then. Here we, here we go. Reason number four. Young Christians' church experiences related to sex or sexuality are often simplistic and judgmental. I'm glad that Brooke Cooper's here because... We have an energy that we can talk. And I'm not saying nothing again. He hadn't already said openly to us in class. That's part of the problem. Y'all don't want to come to class. But anyway. Because of smartphones, even our teenagers have access to all kind of stuff. Pornography, yep. And it's free. Filters don't work. They know how to cut the filter off. They know how to cut the filter off. They been somebody. In this culture, and we, we see it every day. They, they're, they're being raised in a culture that values hypersexuality over wholeness. Teen and 20-something Christians are struggling with how to live meaningful lives in terms of sex and sexuality. Get off your high horse. Who died and made you God? I said it before, I say it again. You don't get credit for what you can't do no more. Let us sit in for a minute. Don't come at me all. I'm, let me sit down. You're coming all strong and finger pointing because don't nobody want your dad guns. Ah. 
You have forgotten what it's like to be 20-something. In your teenage years. Boy, if I had a smartphone back in the day, Craig, it was bad enough with a payphone and a beeper. Sexuality now is it's, it's everywhere. The, the, number five. It's, it's a culture where the, the culture it esteems open mindedness. That's what, it, what they're coming up in. Being open minded, being tolerant of one another, being accepting of one another. Ain't no more in the closet. Forget it. Closet door wide open. Closet door wide open, and they don't care. I got to move on. Who's some good stuff in here? Y'all heard that? Lolo. Y'all know what that is? Tell them what Lolo is, bro. Tell them what Lolo is. Down low. Praise the Lord, my man. A fifth of young adults uh, with Christian background said church is like, it's like a country club, only for insiders. Yeah. Only for insiders. Yeah. Then also they said it's a place where they can't express their doubts. They come to you with a question because they're not sure about something. How do you handle it? Do you tell them that they ain't no good? Yeah. That they are no better than that? That God been too good to them? Yeah. Where am I? We're talking about wine skins. We're talking about skins. And how we handle information. How we talk to one another. How we relate to one another. This is not about me or any of the leadership or any other fellowship uh, uh, condoning your behavior or my behavior. Who don't know what sin is? Who, who don't know that they need help? Who don't know that? Who don't know they got some stuff and things going on in things? Who don't know that? Do I need to come here if you tell me that I need I know I need the Lord. That's why I'm here. Let's talk about, let's talk about some things. Put it up. Put it up. Ooh. What do you see? What do you see? Somebody said two Bibles. What, what, what do you see? Bible on book, Bible on but, but what, is he, what is he saying there? Why, why is he saying he said that he said that I don't even, I don't even have a paper. Anybody got a paper book? You got a paper? I don't even have one. Somebody? Quentin, you got one? There you go. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The can't they got a Bible, a Bible that Brown don't. Praise the Lord. He said this is a Bible. This ain't. How many of our 20-somethings, teenage-somethings, got one of these? How many got one of these? What they got is one of these. And this is only one version. <laughs> That what that that where it came from, brother Jesse. But there's only one version. You don't speak ye and thee. They don't either. They go right here and get some plain talk Bible. Matter of fact, <laughs> matter of fact, they can hit a play button and the Bible be read for them. So why are we so quick to judge and say this is not a Bible? How do you know what they're doing? How do you know? Exactly. Exactly. 
No wonder they don't want to come in here. Remember last week we talked about the, uh, the Amish? And y'all told me y'all wouldn't go there. And if you got there and saw what you saw, you sure wouldn't stay. Next slide. I got to move on. Who? look at this. Read that. No, no. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. What do you see? Tell me what you see. Can y'all read that? Can y'all read that? Some? Okay, let me read it to you. So you, you can see the figurines and everything. So at the bottom it says, so you think we should become a mega church, Earl? Would you elaborate on that? But what do you see? Huh? You got two members. You got two members. You got two members. And if you're, and if you're really looking at it, you see the board? Both of them there. So ain't nobody absent. So you literally have two members in your church. Two! And your giving is $6. It's on the board. Take a look. He got long-term goals up there. Ain't nothing going on. They want an explanation on why. Why you want to grow? I mean, we all here. All two of us are here. Young people, you going to stay there? That looked like an old church. Building, building, building. Next slide. Ooh, I have to take a time right here. Can y'all see that? So, so what do you, what, hold, hold, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. What do you see? Okay, let, let, let me read it. And then we'll talk about it. It says, the whole church watched with nervous anticipation as the visitors sat where the Martins have sat for 42 years. So now, It says the whole church. All of them. The whole church? Watch with nervous anticipation. So, 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 let's look a little deeper, Brother Conley. When, when I look at this, I see an older generation and a younger generation. So the visitor, look, look how you're looking at him. Now, now he just, he, I guess it's his wife, mama, whoever, their girlfriend, whatever. All they know, they, they came to church. They don't know nothing about your seat and chart. They didn't ask, where can we sit? They just sat out. But look at the, look at the Martins, though. Look at the older couple. Oh, look at them. Can't you see them? Look at them. Look at them. Give me your, give me your yeah, yeah, exactly. Give, 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 me, give me your thing again. Give me your thing again, that thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. You, you did what I get ready to do. Here she is. Huh? Thank you. you what? Is this who we want to be? Is this the kind of culture we want to set? Do we care 
where somebody sit. For fuck. It's so much in there, Jamal. You ain't moved in 42 years. You have been stuck in the same spot for 42 years. Now look at that. Look. It's a seat empty right behind them. Bruh, it doesn't matter what doesn't matter. <laughs> Facebook, let me tell you something, Facebook. We got some thugs in here. Yes, we got some thugs in here. Praise the Lord. We got some cusses in here, Brandon. We got some cusses in here. I believe somebody will start cussing if, if, if the Martins came in here with that. Somebody will start cussing. They may not say it, you know, out loud, but they show it with the boop, 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 in their mind, everything. Cussing up a storm. We don't come in here with that. Exclusive versus inclusive. Remember we just talked about, they said that it feels too much like a country club. Too much of an exclusive mm -hmm. membership. Mm -hmm. I, I want to, just, just, for, just for discussion, I want to I wanna ask our young adults, this is where you come in, what I'm talking about. Ask our young adults, our teenagers. Do you, you agree with some of the things we talked about? Judgmental, in, uh, uh, traditions, and, and, and not feeling welcome. Would you agree with that? Have you had that? Are there any others that we should consider that we haven't talked about already? Any others? What would you do if two homosexuals came in here and sat together? What are you going to do? Would you welcome them? Or, or, would you Martin them? They ought not do that type of thing. They ought not do that. A man coming in here with another man. We're talking about real talk. The closet is blown wide open and they don't care. A woman coming here with another woman. What you gonna do? They holding hands. What you gonna do? Can they worship in peace? Or are you gonna martin them? They're here for worship. Is that the time to tell them how much you Bible you know? Is that the time? Can you build a relationship? Can you get to know them? Can you find out who's kin to them? Maybe you might know who's kin to them and get some backstory. How do you know? Maybe she's been abused. Maybe she was touched by some man back in the day. And all she sees is women now because she don't have nothing to do with no man. Maybe, uh, maybe a male has been abused and raped. And that's all he knows. Is that the time to martin them? What about your sin? Yourself. 
You just as raggedy as anybody else. You just as raggedy. <laughs> Sit your raggedy self down. I wish somebody would tell me, somebody, Martin, somebody around here. We're trying to save people around here. We're trying to bring people to Christ. But here you are with your holier than thou self, running people out the doggone door. You will never attract nobody with that kind of mentality. And the word get around quick. They ain't coming back. They go tell, go tell all their friends that's in their circle, don't go there. But we say, we say, Brother Jesse. We say, okay. That we want to be real. Relevant. And ready. So what examples does scriptures give? I'm on 26. What, what examples do scriptures give to help us with this? Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, the easy read version said it like this. He said, I am free. I belong to no other person, but I make myself slave to everyone. Why, Paul? I do this to help save as many people as I can. Watch it. Pay attention. To the Jews. To the strictest of the strict, in other words. To the Bible thumpers. Can I say it like that? Church of Christ folk. <clears throat> I'm going to say it again. Church of Christ folk. I got to tell the truth. To the Jews, I became like a Jew. So that I could help save Jews. I myself am not ruled by the law. But to those who are ruled by the law, I became like someone who is ruled by the law. I became. I'm flexible. I got new skin. My skin ain't set. It ain't solid. Keep going, Brown. They don't want no more. I did this to help save those who are ruled by the law. 21. To those who are without the law. See, Church of Christ folk don't like to hear this kind of stuff. See, we're only supposed to hang around certain kind of people, Coop. It's only supposed to be certain kind of people. Don't, don't make me preach. I'm trying to teach. I'm trying to teach. To those who are without the law, I became like someone who is without the law. Hold on, Paul. Paul said, hush. I did this to help save those who are without the law. But really, I am not without God's law. I am ruled by the law of Christ. Well, I can't wait to get into my next discussion. That's going to be a good one. That's going to be a good one. I can't, I can't, I can't wait to get to my next discussion. Twenty-two, to those who are weak, I became weak so that I could help save them. Who? The weak. I have become all things to all people. I did this so that I could save uh, people in any way, any way possible. Wait a minute, Paul. 
it's got to be a formula. It's a set way. Did Paul say it was only one way to say, In terms of method, in terms of teaching, in terms of interaction. We're not talking about the message. You got to be baptized to be saved. That's in your Bible. That ain't never changing. But what is the conversation about baptism? To someone who don't believe in baptism for salvation, what do you tell them? You're going to hell if you don't get your life together. Is that going to work? They leaving, and they ain't coming back. I do all this to make the good news known. I do it so I can share in the blessings of the good news. Paul say, listen, it ain't about me. Became a Jew to the Jews, to those who were under the law. His standard, Paul's standard, was Christ, not the law. Read that again. Paul's standard was Christ, not the law. Some of us know so much law, we don't know who Christ is. Wow. I gotta move on. Paul became a non-religionist, a non-religionist to those who did not observe the law. Doesn't mean that he was lawless and immoral. He still obeyed the law of God. He's always under the law of Christ. But it, it don't mean... <sighs> How are you going to say you're the crackhead if you ain't... How you... It don't mean you got to smoke crack to talk to him. you. I'm here to show you that I'm not above. It doesn't matter what we do. It doesn't matter what the thing is. I'm just as needed of Christ as you are. I might not smoke crack, but I got my own issue. And let me tell you what Christ has done for me. I'm not here to judge you. Bunch of judgmental. <laughs> he laid his personal liberty and rights aside in order to reach the new and the weak Christians. I didn't call you weak. I didn't say you was weak. But I still got to teach you. I still got to love you. It ain't my fault you weak and don't know it. I'm just, I'm just saying. This is for those who think they got all the Bible knowledge. And they're talking with someone who is less, uh, 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 has less knowledge than them. What's your attitude? How do you approach the person? Just because you can quote the, the books of the Bible don't mean nothing to me. How you living? Well, 
What mattered to him was not him or his rights, but the gospel is what mattered. The fact that Christ came and died for all of us. It don't matter what your issue is. It don't matter. So, you remember when you was 17? You remember when you were 17? Just because you can't drop it like it's hot no more, don't mean you don't want to. Get down there and get stuck. Can't get... <laughs> Knees get the... <laughs> The hip go out. <laughs> you, you. I'm trying to help somebody. I'm trying to help somebody. You remember when you was fine? Why? You remember when you was fine? Why? And all the boys wanted your phone number. You remember that? Now you've gotten older. You've gotten older, you got more mature, and God bless you. And through God's grace, you have grown and been, been delivered from such a life. But don't forget where you came from. You see somebody coming here with a mini skirt on. Because she just left the club. Let me tell y'all something. I, I have come straight to worship from the club. Don't tell me what God can't do. I know what he can do. Come out the streets of the con and go straight and drive the church van. Go drive the church van. We got to be real. And Brother Conley and Brother Butler and myself, we have been, we have uh, made the decision. And we asked you guys, who are we? What do we want to be? Do we want to be comfortable? Just do the same thing like the March did for 42 years and sit in the same deck. <laughs> seat right there behind us, Connie. You can't sit right there. This week, you've been there for 42 years. Can somebody have a seat today? We are. So, what's your wine skin? What's your wine? Are you uh, some of the old wine? Mad Dog 2020? <laughs> Boone's Farm? Ripper. If that's your taste, stay with me. Stay in context. We're talking about methodologies, approach, your thinking, your teaching, your habit. Do you still sit back and just let everybody teach you and you don't study for yourself? And you believe what somebody told you just because of who it was that said it? You don't know whether or not they told you the truth or not. Is that your wine? That's why you sat, because you've been in the same place for 42 years, listening to the same person for 42 years, and that's all you know. Now, here, here I come. I got questions. 
Wait a minute now. What, if, if that's what that is, what about this over here? I'm not trying to be disrespectful. Same thing with our young people today. If they come ask a question, they're not trying to be disrespectful. They're trying to gain some understanding. And if you don't know, just say. Would, would that help you? If, if, if you ask somebody a question, and they, yes, you too, and, 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 and you ask a question and they don't know, would you rather them tell you that they don't know or just tell you something that, you want, that they think you want to hear? Just tell me you don't know. Just tell me, just tell them you don't know. So what's your wine? Are you Mad Dog? Are you Arbor Mist? Stella Rose? Are you still learning? Are you still growing? Old grape and new grape are two different grapes. So northbound, are we going to be new wine skin? Or are we going to be old wine skin? I asked the question, who are we? Y'all told me you want to go northbound. We're going to trust the Holy Spirit to guide us and to lead us northward. Mm-hmm. Trust him to guide our, to control our speed. Yeah. That's another thing that's held the church back, Jamal. Yeah. We don't all grow at the same rate. Nope. We're all on different levels of maturity, and you're absolutely right. Yes, but at some point, we got to move. We can't allow, just like, just like we can't allow the more progressive more liberal-minded people to just take the church and run with it no. in full liberty? No, no. Come on, Doc. You see that perfectly. Yeah. They're going too fast for me. I, I'm not used to that. They're going too fast. Well, just, well, guess what? We also can allow those who want to walk to control the church either. Because we'll never, we'll, we'll be like the Martins. We'll be in the same place 42 years from now. And so, Jesus said, new wine must be poured into new wine skins. I got news for you. Our target, our target audience is young adults. Why? Does it mean you're not important? No, it's not what it means. Does it mean that you're devalued? Absolutely not. You actually are highly valued. But all of us on bar time. All of us on borrowed time. We got to leave the church in good hands. We got to get busy. Look around us. We got two 20 something. I don't know how old he is, but very few young adults. Even less teenagers. In my age, Brother Jesse, we had, there was a whole heap of us back in the day. So what happened? People got wise. And they figured out that people fake it. People are not real, and they left. That's what's up. But northbound, we different. On purpose. Intentionally different. Church of Christ folk, did you notice when Jesse was singing the song? He passed it to Amy, and Amy kept singing. Did you notice that? Yeah. And everybody kept singing. Yeah. Hold it, Amy say, Amy leading us all. Hold it. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just saying. And we're gonna talk about that too. The gender thing. We're gonna talk about that. You might have just gave me a name for that discussion. Me too. I, hadn't, I didn't have a name yet. Maybe you just gave me one. I think it's number four or five. I got about seven of them, Brother Jesse. This is number two. <laughs> I'm just getting started. So where are we today? 
Has this lesson been, has this discussion helped anybody? Help us understand what we need to be doing. And we need to be flexible. We can't be all rigid and stuck. Help us, Lord. I'm thankful today. That God has blessed me to be able to stand in front of you and be used by him. To be his instrument, to be his tool, to play at his disposal with what he gave me. But what about you today? What about you in your own life? Has God been good to you? Has God blessed you? Facebook, has God blessed you? What has God done for you? If you want to know who Jesus Christ is, hit us up in the comment. That's new wine. Yes, sir. That's new wine. Put it in the comment that you want to know who Jesus Christ is. You want to know more about Christ. Somebody get me the word, I promise you. We will set it up and we'll come talk to you. We'll come learn about you. Learn. I'll listen to you. You listen to me. Yeah. Oh, and we have a, a few others that, yes, that I trust, basically, to do that. Ain't no more big eyes and little U's. All us naked before the Lord. Yeah. And we need him. Yes, sir. This is your invitation right now. Lord, Come to Jesus as we stand and sing. Whatever Stand and sing. Doing this, season, this is your time. Don't do it without me. This is your time. Me. God has been good. Don't, don't do it without me. Right there in your home, wherever you are, at work, in your car, wherever you are watching us today. Or maybe there's one here. Season. Maybe it's one here. We had a baptism earlier. Where is he? Where is he? We had a baptism earlier. My man. What's your name again? George McCree. George McCree. Give George McCree a hand, y'all. Put the Lord on the baptism. It's all about Christ here. It ain't about being stuck for 42 years on that you can't believe. God has been good. And we thank you for This is an invitation. This is an invitation. For those that want to come up. Like my man did back here. And put the Lord on the baptism. This is your job. still here with us on today Look right over here thank you for being here with us they are also asking for traveling grace as they return 
to Huntsville, Alabama later in the week. Brother and Sister Bess is asking for traveling grace as they will be going to Gainesville in the morning uh, for another chemo treatment. We also have another guest. We have Mr. Uh, Tyrone Wallace, who is also visiting us on this morning. Is he still here with us? He's our, okay. All right, I want to thank him. Let's give him a love deposit for being here with us on this morning. So the captain knows is requesting prayers for, uh, she will be having some tests and procedures done on tomorrow and later in the week. We have a prayer request for Sister Ruthie Thames and family. She's asking special prayers for her father who is in the hospital. We also have another first time guest. We have Miss Amber Hines. Uh, who's visiting us for the first time on today. Is she still here with us? The guest of Sister uh, Karen Lewis. Thank you for being here with us. We hope you enjoyed the services. Uh, we also have another first time guest. I believe this name is Alania Rainey. Is Miss Rainey still here with us on this morning? Oh, okay. All right. Thank you for being here with us on this morning. And let's also uh, welcome our new brother in Christ. Uh, Brother George McCree, who was baptized on this morning. We want to welcome him to the body. Come on, y'all can do better than that. Yes, sir. Bless the yes, Lord, sir. somebody. I know we ain't supposed to be shaking hands but hugging, but this is a special moment for you. So, uh, But yeah, that, that's just a certificate. We want to welcome you to the Northbound Church of Christ, sir. Welcome, welcome. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 At this time, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, there is a time such as this we come to you with bowed heads and humble hearts. Dear Heavenly Father, before we do anything else, before we say anything else, we want to thank you. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for blessing us when we did not deserve it. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for being better to us than we've been to our own selves. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for getting us out of certain situations that we put ourselves in that we know we should not have been in. But most of all, dear Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the things that you're getting ready to do for us. We know that you have some things going on behind the scenes that you're preparing for us, dear Heavenly Father, and, and, and we just want to thank you in advance for what it is that you're getting ready to bless us with. For many of us have went to you in prayer, dear Heavenly Father, for employment. Many of us have went to you in prayer for help with the bills, dear Heavenly Father. It seems as we have more bills and more money coming in. Some have came to prayer, dear Heavenly Father, for a better relationship with their families. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to come and I want to ask prayers for the family. Pray for that husband and for that wife, dear Heavenly Father, who seems to not to be seeing eye to eye at this time. Bless that family, dear Heavenly Father. Bring them closer together. I want to pray, pray also for our young people in the house. For our children, dear Heavenly Father, for our youth, continue to guide them. Continue to watch over them as they are in school, dear Heavenly Father. But most of all, dear God, we want to say whatever it is that you're doing in this season, we ask that you don't forget about us. At this time, dear Heavenly Father, we just come to you crying out to you, standing in the need of prayer. You have heard your people, dear Heavenly Father. Many have come asking prayers for traveling grace. Bless that family, dear Heavenly Father, to get to their destination without any hurt, harm, or danger, dear Heavenly Father. Bring them back as one. Pray for those who will be traveling, dear Heavenly Father, to have procedures and to have doctor's appointment done, dear Heavenly Father. We, we already know the outcome. You know the outcome. We know that you are the true doctor. But, dear Heavenly Father, we just ask that you just watch over those who will be operating over those bodies, dear Heavenly Father. Help them to, to, to do things and, and, and say the right things and give the praying for, for great results, dear Heavenly Father. Is at this time, dear Heavenly Father, we want to come asking prayers for northbound. Help us to continue to be that example, that spiritual lighthouse you will want us to be, dear Heavenly Father. I want to pray for all churches all around, dear Heavenly Father, uh, and for the young people in the church. Let our young people know that they, they do stand for something. They, they do mean something yes. to the church, dear Heavenly Father. Help them to be able to just come in and to be able to receive you, dear Heavenly Father. And I know it's hard, dear God, to come in and, and not feel welcome, but help them to realize that it's all about you, dear God. It's all about giving you the praise, the glory, and the honor, dear Heavenly Father. Can't nobody put you in the heaven and hell but God, and so we should be worshiping you, dear Heavenly Father. 
we should be telling you thank you for all that you've done dear heavenly father dear god i want to come asking prayers at, for for this nation just watch over our leaders in in, the, in our government dear heavenly father whether it's on city level or a national level dear heavenly father just just pray for our city officials our national officials to be be that example that you would want them to be dear heavenly father if it's ever a time that we need you, dear God, the time is now. During this pandemic, dear Heavenly Father, we, we, we know people we have lost through COVID, dear Heavenly Father. We know people who have battled with COVID. We know people who are dealing with COVID, dear Heavenly Father. I want you to just heal, them, heal their bodies, dear Heavenly Father. And dear Heavenly Father, if I've missed anyone or, or missing a prayer, I just ask whatever it is that person may be standing in need of, that you would just bless them, dear Heavenly Father. Grant them the things that they are looking for to heaven, Father. Comfort them, love them, wrap your love and arms and protection around them to heaven, Father. Dear God, if you don't do anything else, you've already done enough. But it's at this time we're gonna lift your name up every minute, every hour. When we just take that deep breath, that's you moving in us to heaven, Father. When we get into that car, that's that blessing you've given us to heaven, Father. When we are able to put one foot in front of the other, that's you blessing us, dear Heavenly Father. We ought to be grateful for what you have done for us, dear Heavenly Father, because we can't even walk a straight line on our own, dear Heavenly Father. When we wake up in the morning, we open the two gifts that we call eyes, dear Heavenly Father. That's when our worship should have started. Not when we got to the church, but the minute we opened our eyes and was able to put our feet on the floor, and we realized that we was able to move, and we was able to realize that we had air flowing through us that's when our worship should have started with you when we looked around and our children were still doing fine when we looked around and our family was still doing fine that's when our worship should have started with you dear heavenly father we all are going through some things we all are struggling with some things dear heavenly father we just ask that you just help us we just ask you that you just bless us lord we need you right now now unto him who was able to do anything and everything but fail May the Lord bless you. May he shine his, his light upon you. And may he bless you real good. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the church say amen. At this time, this is the end of our services. We're going to ask if this side will answer out this door over here. This side will answer out the side door. And our middle sessions, if you will answer out the back door. Thank you. Brother Jesse have uh, copies of CDs, straight company CD. He'll be out in the front for you. If y'all can, let's go bless that ministry, please.